only is it good for, for the city because it proves that the city is being invested in and jobs are being created, but it also means that the city is bringing in extra revenue. And that extra revenue means that we can then use that to pay for the services that we want for the people within the city, the very vulnerable people that we, we want to support. And if you look at you know, uh, what we've done, um, that invests to earn, just alone in terms of, um, you know, those figures are, are made up figures. They're, they're figures that, that are uh, there for all, all to see. On the housing alone, we've generated and created £8 million a year in new council tax revenue. £8 million that we've never had uh, before. And, you know, if we look at, um, you know, what we've also done with the Invest 2A, and remember, let's, let's remember, you know, um, uh, Council of Kenburn is, is a little Democratic group, I don't know whether the Greens, say they can't remember, But I don't know whether they did oppose Cunard. They might have opposed Cunard and Tan Finch Farm. Well, so you can't remember yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, well let, let me tell you that Finch Farm, Cunard, and the housing that we've built has brought in £12 million extra revenue into our city. That's what it's called, £12 million. And of course, you all know, you know the story of the Echo Tax. £50,000 on tax, um, and it's fantastic because you can boil a tomato in, in, in it and stuff like that, it's, it's fantastic, <laughs> the, the tax. But the building is now worth £27 million in debt. The Lima building has just been sold for £48 million, so I guess that when we got that price a year ago, £27 million, that the building is, is worth uh, a lot more, probably uh, in excess of 35 million. But then, let's have a look at what we've done. Last night, we had the, uh, the launch, if you like, the British Museum experience, which is going to be a fantastic asset for our city. Brilliant in terms of bringing in tourists into our city, bringing in new investments and new jobs, and bringing in a rent roll of around about, as I say, two million pound, when they're finally up and running with the stuff that they're also putting in uh, to the QNR building. But something that we're delighted with and something that we're proud of, but you know, we'll remind um, our, our opposition colleagues about their attacks on their uh, not some opposition, some opposition, who attacked us uh, by uh, QNR building and also uh, Finch Farm. And then, you know, when we look at the things that we're doing, the car park that we're building. <coughs> Um, and the car park and spaces that we're creating is desperately needed and it will bring in a revenue of around about 920. The new uh, car park that we're building in Victoria Street uh, will bring in around about 400,000 pounds. So you can see how we invest to earn strategy works rather than leaving it all cracked up and you couldn't park in there and you needed well you did, you did and some people didn't park in there. We're going to get new revenue uh, coming into the city, and let's not forget, by the way, that all the money that comes in through the car parks actually is used for our transport and infrastructure. And I don't know whether you notice driving around the city that the potholes are getting bigger and the gap in funding is getting bigger, and we've got more money. So everything we raise is able and should be able to actually help us support the roads uh, infrastructure program. And then, you know, the cruise line is saying, well, uh, we've negotiated some land with Peel. Negotiated some land, we're going to be building a new cruise line that's handled on there, and it's going to bring in uh, lots of revenue, including a new hotel and a new car park uh, down there. The uh, Isle of Man governments have worked with us, we've been over, me and the chief executive have been over to the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man are building a new terminal just a little bit further down with an embassy, and the whole waterfront, given that we're getting uh, around about 33 million pounds spent on new road infrastructure to connect the whole waterfront with the 10 streets is absolutely uh, brilliant showing how invest to earn and the imagination and the creativity and the vision of the council is actually what's bringing in uh, that extra money. So as I said, if you look at uh, what we're also doing in terms of working with partners and working with people to keep the city growing and making sure that 
that, but are able to invest, not just protecting people, but able to provide the quality services and do things differently. And, you know, I haven't even mentioned the fact that we have the way that we have Aquatic Centre, because there's two billion pounds in here, inherited by the Liberal Democrats, that we've still got another 11 years to pay it off. I haven't mentioned the fact that we've got Park the School, another millstone round our neck as well, and other PFI things. But what we're doing, and again, things that are attacked by the Liberal Democrats, who try to claim that the hopes, the football hopes, and the, the grass is not safe. It's all going through all the proper scrutiny tests and all of the proper tests, and we wouldn't dare do anything with any of that facilities that affected our children's health and well-being. But it's 17, that's what the problem is, you see, because they can't, they can't stand the fact that despite those challenges, this is one of the most successful administrations this city has ever had. Can't stand that. So the money that we're spending, 17, new, uh, 17 million pounds, is money that we've negotiated with Sports England and we're investing ourselves that will go across uh, the city. And that's what we should be proud of. And we're also, you know, the leisure centres within our city face a deficit of 1.5 million say and I'll give, let's close them and save that money and lose jobs and outsource them. We're saying no, because not only are we going to put and keep them open, but we're going to be investing in them and we'll highlight shortly where that investment is going to be within the city, but we'll be investing because it's invests away, because the facilities are old, they weren't dealt with by the little Democrats in the previous administration just the way that the aquatic centre in somebody's ward that they wanted, that left us with the debt. So no investment, but we'll deal with that by working with Sports England and developing and investing in, in our uh, city. And then, as I said, you know, two million pounds a year in the budget for street scene quality improvements. Um, and uh, well done, Council Monkey, for having the team up and standing up to Tesco. Um, again, big piece in, in, in the echo today. A little piece about the BMA yesterday, but a big massive piece uh, on the other. Well, congratulations to Councillor Mumby for telling Tesco off for stopping people, firing people for dropping <coughs> And that's exactly what we should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, don't drop the bus yeah. So, that's, that's a, again an investment that's going into the city. And then when you look at you know, the major projects, Paddington Village, that's mind again people just a, an important point about how we're able to develop plants and mills and what it's going to generate because I mentioned before about the 350 million pound that was taken away from <coughs> building schools for the future but you've delivered 12 new schools <coughs> three brand new secondary schools a year more than the last 30 years in this council that's what you've delivered. 12 new schools, two, set, two special schools, and investments in the primary sector. And despite what's happening up at Walton, they'll have a brand new school up there, no one's sure as well. So something that we should be proud of. But what we did was we used that school site in, in the old uh, St. Nicholas's site, Paddycom uh, site, and we're turning that into a village we've got. Um, Lots of people interested, and we've also got lots of commi commitment to invest in that, the Royal College of Physicians, for instance, a language school, and many, many other things <coughs> that are happening there. And as I said, the cruise line at Terminal, with a new car park, park and hotel, Ed's Lane being transformed, you have to look at it, it's fantastic. You remember when that was in deadlock, when Liverpool City Council and the Liberal Democrats were taken um, there into court? You remember that? I knew one locked it. Yeah, this administration, me sat down with them and got it. It's happening. Ten streets, what we've just announced recently, in terms of the ten streets, that because the Baltic quarter is so successful, and we need to actually find another quarter. Some of that land we own, working in partners uh, with others to actually create a, a really vibrant area, especially with the developments around um, uh, the, the North Liverpool site. And then Marwood Tower. I always remember when driving past on a scene that was looked at it and said, why are you pulling it down? So we've now got investments in it and it's an absolute, I, I urge anybody 
to go up that and up, but it, because it's absolutely fantastic, and it's the type of thing that we should be doing in terms of housing in the future. Absolutely brilliant. Project Jennifer, another project that was stalled. And the reason why I mentioned these is because these are what are generating wealth and growth and business and jobs for our city, and that's the twin track approach that we've had, protecting the vulnerable and growing the economy. Next week, um, I remember when Mipham used to be called the John. Well, next week, we'll go to Mipham, completely and totally paid for by the private sector, no cost to the council, and while we're out there, there'll be significant announcements made about jobs and growth within the city. That's why we're going, we're not doing it, it's going to have a cup of tea on a yacht, as previous uh, people used to do. We're going there to actually work hard uh, and, and deliver on investments and projects, so I'm looking forward to that, that happens uh, next week. But then, you know, I wanted to look at, in terms of culture, um, you know, this year we've got our forces day uh, coming here as a direct result of what we do in this city, that's whether it's the Giants, whether it's the Three Queens, whether it's the Lynn Festival, you know, people are so uh, amazed by what we do in putting on events that we've actually won on forces day, they're coming here. Uh, but if you look at the things uh, that we've also done in terms of to support the retail sector, because uh, and also the tourism and hospitality sector, and that's why uh, the group line is here, that's why the BMA experience in QNR are, are important to us. And that's why everything that we do, rather than slashing bear culture, we invest in it. And we look at new ways. You know, look at you know, what we've done with the likes of the Everyman Theatre. It wouldn't have happened without our administration. It just simply wouldn't have happened. The Royal Court simply wouldn't have happened without our investments in terms of negotiating the lease and allowing them to borrow on the strength of that. The Everyman Theatre closed for uh, a, a long time with no uh, possibility of, of open. And, and also, the Royal Philharmonic uh, Orchestra and the ability that they've had to be able to shape their new buildings to actually accommodate the growth. There they are, they've put that uh, amount of money, over £52 million uh, uh, supported, bringing 47 GBF, 4.7 visitors coming uh, to our city as a result of that investment and the things that we're doing. Absolutely uh, crucial to the local economy and to culture and tourism in our city. And as I said yesterday, and uh, Peter Basil Getty actually quotes me uh, quite often when he says, and I said, that um, arts and culture and tourism are the rocket fuel for this city in terms of job and prosperity. Because not only did he provide uh, things to do, building on the capital of culture in 2018, but actually enhancing uh, our offer here. And that's why we protect our buildings and have spent uh, 50, 60 million pounds in supporting buildings, old buildings, and bringing them back into use, including the, um, the, the Royal Exchange building uh, on the corner of North John Street, which is now the Aloft Hotel. Again, what we did in our invest to aid strategy. And that's what we invested by the way <coughs> in, in the uh, Mr. Booster State himself is sitting there. Um, and remember that we left the streets like war zones. And don't forget the headline a couple of weeks before that was the one star state. Remember when this council was labelled by the audit commission as only one star? That was with money swimming around the council. They were still not able to actually manage the budget or manage the city council in a way of dealing uh, with growth. So that's the booster state now by the way. It's in the water. Using that sort of 
uh, analogy of cards being dealt, we've got no more real cards to play. Uh, by 2020, we've got no more uh, reserves to use or, or stuff. But I think, you know, when people talk to us about fighting back and standing up for people, every single day we do that. Every single day this administration stands up and fights for people and works hard for people. That's why we're able to do that. And tomorrow, the uh, Minister for Adult Social Care, um, Mr. Mallard, is meeting myself and Samir uh, to discuss uh, the adult social care problem in Liverpool. So, you know, we all the time uh, raise issues and fight and argue our case. And we're successful. Because let's be clear, without the no detriment clause that I got into, that pilot study, that business pilot, we'd be making serious cuts into services, the voluntary sector, adult social care. So that's what we do. Now people give us no credit for that. Um, and certainly as far as I'm concerned, that is something that uh, we've got to try uh, and explain to people uh, the situation that we find. But every single day we're fighting on their behalf. And that's why, you know, a track record of delivery, that's what that is. It's a track record of delivery and a promise of more. When I was given the first uh, draft budget uh, before Christmas, there was something around about 500 jobs being expected to be cut, and there was 14% in adult social care to be cut. And there was many, many other things like the CRU and all of those things that were going to uh, be cut. And since then, we've just, you know, I said, of course, uh, that we needed to, to deal with that and rejected it. And yes, there are going to be 300 job losses. And that is something that I'm sure it does with you. It breaks our heart that we're going to have to lose another 300 members of staff. But it could have been so much worse with the Tories in power. <coughs> Only for us being the buffer and protecting people. And that's what we are about. That's why that partnership with our trade unions, as I mentioned at the start, is so important. And that's why there's been no compulsory redundancies. No. And it could have been dead easy, dead easy for this administration to actually say when people were going for VER, we're not paying it at the top rate, we're going to make you redundant, and we're going to pay it at the low rate. And it's cost us tens of millions of pounds tens of millions of pounds worth it because the people that we've lost have been dedicated, loyal and hard working. <laughs> so, so I'm happy to take uh, questions on the budget. Uh, it explains uh, the circumstances uh, within the papers. Uh, people have had the chance to come to cabinet. People have had the chance to come to orders. Uh, select committee, uh, not many people did. Uh, so you know, we've tried to answer in the most honest uh, way that we can. But what I would say to you is that I recommend with a heavy heart the budget before you and ask you to support it. Thank you.
So, um, yes, the Liberal Party will, and I wish you would stop lobbying all the oppositions together. You should know better. Um, with that uh, uh, point making, um, I did take the opportunity of meeting privately and we did make some suggestions about potential sites that could be used to release land on playing fields and unlock um, some housing sites and also potentially in the lobby. Um, in the will come back to us uh, on those uh, because we did have some constructive meetings with assignments on one of those sites. Uh, when we talk about sports centres, uh, one of the things I've always noticed is a lot of the private sector are now offering more competitive portfolio of powers than, than, than our own lifestyle gyms. And uh, one of the things we did fund in Tudor, of course, uh, extra hours at Peter Lloyd to attract that late customer. Um, we would want, certainly, whilst there was investment in life and health, welcome that, but we'd also like uh, any working party to look at how do you make the offer more attractive and competitive, not just in, in price. Um, lastly, uh, um, as you know, I was always had a beef about Derek land sites. Um, in 2014 and 2015 and 2016, we received publications in your name, I'm not sure if they wrote them, saying that the, uh, one of the largest derelict sites, Blight and Alpha, the city of Carlton, was to be imminently demolished. Is there actually real progress on that um, claim, which clearly imminently demolished? I don't think time survives two years. Um, now, since the site owners are not carrying out their legal duty uh, with regards to the uh, evasive species of Japanese knotweed, can the council not use its powers to get the site into a more responsible ownership? Yeah, a couple of things, Councillor uh, Bradley. First and foremost, yes, I'd be delighted if you were to join uh, any of the task groups, whether it be on the uh, one stop shops or the libraries, we'd you know, be uh, delighted, I'm sure. Um, Councillor Simon would welcome you on the libraries uh, task group as well as the, the, the one stop shops. Uh, with regards to uh, conversations or communication with you around uh, what we're doing with leisure, uh, yes, I have had that conversation with you. Yes, uh, that uh, conversation uh, and what we discussed is still very much uh, in, in our plans and in our thoughts. And with regards to the Carlton, uh, can I just say that when we said that hopefully it would be done, it was done in good faith. And um, what happened was, of course, uh, things went wrong, as often is the case with the private sector, and people uh, roll into liquidation and, 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 and things happen. But what I can say to you is that I'm confident that things are moving in the right direction, and indeed I'll get somebody to provide you with an update uh, within the next 72 hours. Okay, any further questions? No. So, um, I've been made aware of two budget amendments have been received. The first amendment will be coming from Councillor Tom Crone. The Director of Finance and Resources can advise the Council that this amendment is lawful. So this is attached to the note as Appendix B as circulated. So before we come to the amendment, and to assist me, can those members who wish to speak the amendment please indicate to me now.
recent months, newspaper headlines and broadcasters sound bites have screamed that social care is in crisis. It needs an urgent injection of cash to cope with the increasing demands of an ageing population, increasing life expectancy, and a growing funding gap. With this in mind, we're proposing calling for a referendum for a 9% counter tax increase. <laughs> if we get a referendum this time, we won't be calling for a referendum triggering rise for the next two years. We're front loading the increase so future smaller rise raises are applied to a larger base rate, and so that we do not have more than one costly referendum. Why 9%? Despite the failure by the Mayor to promote the case for a referendum triggering the capital tax rise during his half-hearted online consultation, 42% of the participants declared themselves in favour of the proposed 10%. We believe that with a concerted, fully informed campaign, the majority of people would support a 9% increase, especially when the amount of vital services that could be provided by the additional revenue is spelled out. The additional council tax rise is equivalent to 74p a week for the majority of households in Liverpool and will raise just shy of an extra £6 million. As well as the council tax rise, we will make reductions to the highest paid senior staff salaries and allowances paid to the elected mayor and mayor of these. We will make further savings by scrapping free parking for councillors. This will be an administration showing leadership in the fight against air pollution rather than one with scrapped bus lanes, chainsaws down mature trees to build a multi-storey car park, flogs off green space for development, and then announces the back of a fat packet policy about banning diesel cars in eight years' time. You really couldn't make it up. <coughs> it would be fair to mention at this point that the leader of the Lib Dem showed clearly where he stands on Green Street when he voted in favour of removing the trees at Victoria Street for a new 330 space car park which will increase traffic and air pollution in the city centre. The extra revenue brought in through our proposals would enable us to prevent a number of cuts to communities which would help keep Liverpool cleaner and safer. For example, we will reverse the plan £300,000 cut to environmental health. This will do more to promote cleanliness and safety in our neighbourhoods than any throwaway notion of letting people off their council tax they get information about dog farming. Contrast a green commitment to the environment versus labour policy on the hoof. We'll prevent any departmental cuts to adult social care and children and young people services, which are among the most stretched departments in the council. As well as reversing departmental cuts, there will remain £3.5 million to allocate providing frontline care to the most vulnerable children and older people in our city including free care packages for other adults. Ours is a bold budget proposal which would help protect social care and essential frontline front services dealing with basic cleanliness and safety in our communities. But we want it to be bolder. We also want to change the governance structure. We've not been allowed to include this in our budget amendment, but we're signalling loud and clear that we want the current post of Mayor of Liverpool to be scrapped and indeed for the whole system of governance, including Mayor of Liverpool,
also a fact that they are in A and B in particular because they're living in areas of considerable poverty in this city. If I lived in Surrey, I'd have no hesitation in going for a referendum. If, as the mayor said, I lived in Whitney, I'd have no hesitation in going for a referendum because that is largely wealthier, obviously wealthy, but wealthier people who can pay a higher amount. But given the unfairness of council tax, this would be the very poor paying for the extremely poor. That is not an option that I could tolerate any more than we need to in this city. The second reason is that we've had a mini referendum. And although you could say it wasn't a, a massive exercise, it was an attempt uh, in the discussions, uh, consultation about the budget to find out what people wanted. If I remember the figure, 57% said clearly they would not support a 10% a council tax increase, not for this year, it must be said, but for next year. And I have no doubt at all, based on that evidence but common sense, <laughs> is that what they would do again. And just the last thing I would like to say is about adult social care. Clearly, this council, like every other, almost every other, is in a very difficult position. But there is a modicum <coughs> of good news in that, which is why I don't support the analysis that Councillor Cronin has given us, that adult, adult social care it is going to come to an end. We know that the Better Care Fund has been reorganised. And so increasingly over the next three years, as you can see from the budget documents, we will get proportionately more. We've lost a bit uh, from the new homes bonus, but nowhere near as much as Conservative districts have, and we gain somewhat on adult social care through the Better Care Fund and the realignment, based not just on crude numbers, uh, but on need. And there also may be some good news in today's budget. I, I'm not going to ask the, Lord, uh, the, the Mayor to say what precisely was moved, because I suspect we won't know until the consultation documents come out, but apparently, two billion pounds worth of new money is two billion pounds of new money over the next three years is coming into adult social care. That's good. You could not have chosen a better day for meeting the minister uh, for adult social care than tomorrow to try and find out where that two billion is going. But when I went in, which I have done on three occasions, I made it very clear that he understood where our tax base was. And that we're not just crying wolf and demanding more money so that we can splurge it. We do actually need that money, which we cannot raise, even if we were allowed to raise council tax by an unlimited amount through a council tax on a city where so many people live on, near, or even under the breadline. So for those three reasons why we'll vote against this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Councillor Bush.
for not proposing any serious changes when we're just finding 90 billion of gas. There's no real alternative presented, no, no new ideas, nothing. Um, so I, I, it would be nice if you'd be out front and say, Joe, Cabinet, officers, the rest, you've done an amazing job. Yet again, you've saved our city. Particularly, it would be nice to make Abel Council Ken and his colleagues <coughs> here the misery that their party has inflicted on the city. It is really important to say that because the opposition parties, sorry, Councillor Radford, except the opposition, two of the opposition parties are um, said that no serious alternative to the budget. And they never have. What an indictment. In the worst period, the worst financial crisis this city has ever faced, no serious attempt to get good to that. No, I think we're good. I think we've done a great job. But I honestly do think the vote shouldn't be the same as mayor. I'm sure there could have been better ideas on one or two things that we've got. So it's it's not a criticism. It's just possible somebody might have come up with better ideas. But they didn't even attempt it. Right. So, thanks. Really appreciate the vote of confidence. Um, <coughs> secondly, um, I, forgive me, Councillor Orr, because I know you're interested in promoting reading. I want to explain some things about language to the Green Party, but maybe you'll follow it up with them when you discuss what you do the child with them. There's a difference between cuts and savings, and you seem to have it the wrong way round. Um, for example, you talk about cuts to children and young people's services, which I think cuts for Kushner's seasons, removing children from um, out-of-city placements and getting them to foster care. I'd say that's a saving, not a cut. Right. And it's something that we want to do. But when it comes to reducing the neighbourhood fund by 25%, there's no, nothing other than calling that a cut. It's not a saving. You're cutting 25%. So it's going back, for example, on some of the youth provision to Michael's board, which is funded. It's a cut, and it's a really bad cut, because the neighbourhood fund funds really important services. It's crucial for the youth provision, lots of environmental stuff. It's an unashamed cut. Looking at some of the other cuts you talk about, because they're in my portfolio, um, just to explain a bit of the other point I want to make, which is obvious but needs saying, setting a budget is hard, delivering it is far more difficult. And I'm absolutely sure we won't deliver all of the savings that we set in the budget. We'll have to find other ways of doing it. It's always like that, particularly when you're looking at a budget on the scale. But um, I don't have a problem about looking at introducing a premium service for bulky bonds. So um, I don't really know why you would. Because I don't want to squeeze it out, but okay. Um, maybe it's right, right. And looking at environmental health and licensing and public protection, I gather there's some bad men stalking the city, and I hold up my hands because it's impartially responsible. It hasn't cost us a penny, but they're issuing fines for people for literally fines. Um, and that's going to be for a year. We hope eventually we've done it more so we can deliver it in house and fund our service. But that's one of the ways we're looking at finding different ways of delivering service. That catches up on the savings that we're making. One of the key things we're doing for Liverpool Street Scene Services, and I do report on this regularly to uh, the Neighbourhood Select Committee, and Councillor Brown attends that, and hopefully listens to my reports, which are lengthy, as I <coughs> well know, is we talk about the way we use the new company we've created to find savings and develop new business. So just remember, there's a difference between a couple of savings. There are some cuts in the budget, not many actually, we've done an incredible job of generating new income, finding savings. But when you talk about a cut, which is what you're proposing in the neighbourhood fund, that's a cut, it's not saving. And finally, um, why on earth do you want to inflict those cuts on the other ones that would happen to an unsuccessful attempt to have a referendum, except to look good? So try and do good, not look good, and use language. Yeah. Uh, I've just realised that I do have a pecuniary interest and therefore I'm going to have to leave the chair back. I was a bit 
excuse that. I thought I haven't said anything. <laughs> uh, first of all, for your permission, just, just a very quick word from the grace of Sammy. You will be called, my love, man, a phone call I made to you on Saturday uh, afternoon. Five, six years ago, I had a constituent, a vulnerable woman, who was attempting to kill herself and actually sending me photos. Very quickly, within minutes, you got Sammy, I got a phone call back from Sammy, who reacted with incredible speed. Uh, we had people round the house that saved that woman's life that afternoon. Uh, that woman is now uh, fit and well and has her children back and is a key part of this, uh, of, 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 of this city. And that's because of Sammy's care, speed response. He saved that woman's life that afternoon, Sammy, thank you. Uh, just uh, just on, on, on the Green Amendment, ah, do you know what? Sometimes I despair. Uh, 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 it's a vanity project. The whole idea that we can win a referendum has some attraction to some of us who quite like to go around the streets saying, what are you going to do? You can vote for, will you go in and support us and, and protecting certain things? And you know what, to our face, they may well say, yes, 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 absolutely. But when they go into the ballot box, they will reject it. Because that's the way of the world. What we have to do is do exactly what we're doing. <coughs> when I came in today, I was sort of humorously accused me of, of, of not taking austerity seriously. Well, we, 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 we had a, a, a sharp exchange of views. Because we fought austerity since the day we came to power. We fought it by saving children's centres, saving libraries, saving sports centres, <coughs> working innovatively. In, 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 in this particular budget, I am particularly proud of the council tax support, the council tax support scheme. Do you know what? We have protected the 40,000 poorest people in this city by finding that money <coughs> and it gives the lie to every person that accuses us of passing on the government's cuts. The government's cuts! <laughs> no! So, my message uh, to Tom and the Green, I, I know you're all committed and I know you're all passionate, I don't mean that patronising. Please sometimes join us in the real world, support this budget, withdraw your amendments. We need to work together to assuage the terrible impact that the cuts bring on us. It's a vanity project. Fully.